Hey guys, how are you all doing? This is the MMA Breakdown with my predictions for UFC Fight Night Bisbing vs. Lee um, or UFC Fight Night 48 taking place in Macau, China this Saturday night before the uh, Ben Henderson, Rafael Dos Anjos fight card and to me this card is just completely negligible outside of the main and co-main event which you know are good fights and important guys but the rest of this card is just terrible um, it's a, a really uh, really bad card um, and most of these guys uh, haven't fought since the last uh, China card back in March um, which just shows you that uh, their only relevance in the UFC is to fill these uh, fight pass cards in their home country. Um, and most of them, uh, that are most of the guys on this card that did fight on the last Macau card um, in March, a lot of those guys seem to be really low level. Um, a lot of the Asian fighters, um, just really low uh, skill level. MMA fighters and um, yeah, I'm not looking forward to this card uh, at all um, outside of the main and co-main events uh, but it's going to be a long road to get to those fights uh, and I'm going to warn you right now I'm only going to be making three picks I think uh, on this entire card because most of these guys uh, most of these fights um, are newcomers uh, or one fighter having fought in the UFC before and, the re and uh, their opponents, uh, almost all newcomers here. So um, we should get uh, through this pretty quickly. This should be a short video. Um, and we'll get right to the, the meat of this card uh, with the main and co-main. But uh, let's start uh, from the bottom and uh, work our way up. So starting off with the preliminary card, um, which is uh, also on UFC Fight Pass, both the main and prelim cards are on Fight Pass, uh, so um, not a real distinction there. But anyway, starting off the card at Bantamweight, Yao, Sig Yao Shikui versus Royston Wee. Um, Royston Wee fought on the, he actually fought on the first Fight Pass card, I believe, in, um, uh, God, I'm sorry. In Singapore, um, and he had a win over Dave Galera, where he out wrestled him, um, held him down, stayed in top position. But as Luke Thomas uh, loves to point out, um, seemed really inexperienced uh, with his jujitsu game. Uh, couldn't move to full mount. Uh, never really advanced position, and Galera wasn't doing anything to prevent him from doing that. Um, it's a pretty uh, tedious fight um, with Royce and Wee just taking Galera down who didn't seem to be you know any kind of uh, credible challenge for him and um, yeah I wrestled him for the whole fight and the other guy I have no idea who he is um, so obviously I'm not gonna make a pick here uh, but that's that's all I uh, I just uh, wanted to recap Royce and Wee's last fight there, but uh, can't make a pick. And next up, women's bantamweight fight, Elizabeth Phillips <clears throat> versus Milana Dudieva. And Elizabeth Phillips fought um, Valerie Latorno in her debut, and I believe both of those women uh, took that fight on short notice. Um, and Phillips, I scored that first round for her, I think. Um, she comes out of, uh, I believe she's out of Sick Jitsu um, uh, with Juliana Pena. Um, but Phillips uh, came forward, was aggressive in the first round, uh, seemed to land some hard shots, but after that just uh, seemed to fade, didn't have the cardio, and Latorno was just too technical for her and um, seemed to push the pace more as the fight went on. Uh, although Phillips, I thought, looked really tough and uh, was in that fight the whole time. 
um, just didn't quite have the technical striking or the gas to keep up. And Dudieva, again, newcomer, don't know anything about her, and I'm not going to make a pick here, although I would lean towards Phillips. Um, I think she looked good, uh, tough girl, and um, yeah, I would expect her to, I would expect her to look good here, but um, can't make a pick. And moving on, Walter Waite fight, Wong on Ying, uh, taking on Colby Covington, and um, Wong on Ying, uh, he beat Albert Chang, I believe, uh, in his debut, and uh, both those guys were from tough China. Um, I believe it was a doctor stoppage at the end of the first round. Um, let me just clarify that quickly. It's hard to keep all of these fighters straight. Um, yeah, he beat Albert Chang uh, in the last uh, Macau card uh, by Dr. Stoppage at the end of the first round, and I very vaguely remember that fight. Um, all I can say is that uh, the guys from that tough t China show uh, just seem to be really inexperienced and again really low-level uh, MMA fighters. Um, Colby Covington, uh, he's out of American Top Team I believe, uh, not that I know anything about him, but uh, I would expect him to get the win here. Uh, again, those guys uh, from tough China looked really bad. Um, I, I would take Colby Covington, but again, don't know anything about him. Uh, don't know much about on Ying. I didn't watch uh, Tough China, by the way, um, so I'm not going to make a pick here either. And moving on, finally, a name uh, we sort of care about. Uh, Bantamweight fight, Roland DeLorme taking on Yuta Sasaki. Um, Yuta Sasaki, again, newcomer. Don't know anything about him. Uh, looking at his record here, uh, seems pretty good on paper. He's 17 and one with two draws. Um, Roland Delorme, a uh, guy that he he's shown that he has some skills at time at times um, on the ground, uh, on the feet. Um, he's had some nice performances. His finish over Nick Denis. Um, did well uh, in the first round against uh, Bruce Leroy, um, but just his growth uh, seemed to really taper off, um, not getting better fight to fight, um, and his last fight uh, really kind of got uh, ragdolled by newcomer Michinori Tanaka, and uh, Tanaka after that fight I realized he was a hyped prospect, and I thought he looked really good against Delorme, I expect him to be a good fighter. I don't know if Sasaka, Sasaki is on the same level as Tanaka at all. Um, I, I don't, I wouldn't uh, know that. Um, but I'm not comfortable taking Roland DeLorme here um, just based on his UFC experience and the wins he's had in the UFC. Um, he's a veteran of tough, uh, tough 14. Um, lost to TJ Dillashaw in the house and uh, since coming in he's been kind of inconsistent um, he had some win over guys who you know didn't hang around for too long Nick Denis and Josh Ferguson uh, got knocked out by Francisco Rivera against Edwin Figueroa that was a really back and forth fight but he got nearly uh, got finished on several occasions in that fight um, and then on a two-fight losing streak now against Bruce Leroy and Tanaka. So, you know, I would, uh, again, I'd lean towards DeLorme, but not confident in that at all. Um, I think he's really uh, you know, kind of stuck with his um, basic uh, striking skills and uh, his slightly above-average ground game, but just doesn't seem to be really getting better and, and putting it all together as a fighter, uh, fight to fight. So not making a pick there. Um, and next up, a welterweight Alberto Mina taking on Shin Sho and Zai. Um, I believe there's some hype around Nzai. Um, 
again, newcomer, don't know anything about him. Alberto Mina also making his debut. He was supposed to fight Zach Cummings on the last uh, on the last Macau card, but uh, Cummings missed weight, I believe. Um, so that fight was uh, canceled. And uh, again, uh, no analysis here. I'm not gonna make a pick. And the last card on the prelim card, um, Walter White fight, Wang Sai taking on Danny the Cheesecake Assassin Mitchell. Wang Sai, finalist from uh, Tough China, fought uh, fought Zhang Li Peng uh, in the finale. Lost that fight. Um, I believe Sai was heavily favored, and uh, Ling Peng just kind of outworked him and outgrappled him. Uh, and again, both those guys uh, looked like they were really low-level fighters. Um, not trying to discredit them, just. Um, you know, that's what I observed. And Danny Mitchell uh, coming off of his debut loss to Igor Araujo, who I think is an underrated uh, fighter at the lower level. Um, I really liked uh, Araujo's performance against um, uh, Alcantara, the, the brother, Eldemar Alcantara. Um, don't remember too much about uh, Mitchell's fight against Araujo, but... Uh, both these guys have fought in the UFC before, so I have to make a pick. Um, I'm going to take Danny Mitchell uh, just because Wong Sai, uh, he lost his fight uh, for one thing and just seemed to be a really low-level mixed martial artist, so I'm taking Danny Mitchell. And on to the main card of featherweight, Ning Guang Yu taking on Yang Jinping. Um, <clears throat> this is the featherweight finale from Tough China um, and again I didn't watch that show and uh, this wasn't on the the other the Tough China finale card obviously um, injury or something happened and uh, this is the finale fight here uh, didn't watch the show I have no idea who these guys are um, moving on lightweight uh, winner of Tough China Zhang Li Peng taking on Brendan O'Reilly vet of tough, uh, tough Nations, got finished by Cajun Johnson, it was the first uh, fight of the season, um, and Zhang Li Peng, uh, <clears throat> I already talked about him and his win over uh, Wang Sai, just kind of out uh, worked him, out grappled him from what I remember, um, and Brendan O'Reilly, uh, just kind of got ran through by Cajun Johnson. I remember being really impressed with Cajun Johnson uh, after that win and thought he was going to be the one to win the show. Um, and Brendan O'Reilly hasn't fought. Uh, he didn't fight in the Tough Nations finale or hasn't fought in the UFC since the show. So um, <clears throat> don't really know anything about him. And Lee Pang, um, again, just seemed to be low-level guys. Uh, and, uh, you know... But I'm not, uh, I'm not confident that Brendan O'Reilly, um, an Australian guy, <clears throat> is more skilled than Zhang Li Peng. Uh, I think uh, both of those tough seasons had uh, pretty low-level guys on there. Uh, so I'm not going to make a pick here either. Um, but finally, on to the main and, and co-main event. <clears throat> a welterweight. Uh, Dong Young Kim, the stun gun, taking on Tyron Woodley. Um, really uh, important fight for both guys. Both guys trying to make their case as elite uh, contenders at welterweight. <clears throat> I am not a fan of the matchmaking here, though. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Tyron Woodley, I don't think he deserves this fight, uh, quite frankly. Um, I don't know why Rory McDonald didn't uh, get this fight. Maybe he was offered and he turned it down. I don't know. Um, but pretty stupid, actually. Uh, <clears throat> especially considering uh, the guy Rory McDonald's fighting next, uh, Tarek Safadine, is the guy that uh, Woodley just beat. Uh, or I'm sorry, that Woodley beat before, and McDonald just dominated Woodley. So makes no sense. Um, and Dong Young Kim uh, has been on a real tear, has looked great, and um, you know I think he deserves to be fighting uh, 
and a, another contender coming off of a win. Um, a bad uh, situation, a raw deal for Dong Hyun Kim, uh, beating Tyron Woodley, a guy just coming off of a loss. You know, still a, a viable contender, but um, losing to Tyron Woodley uh, would not be would not be good for Dong Hyun Kim. Um, but Dong Hyun Kim, let's talk about his streak a little bit. Um, now four fight win streak, um, really dominant uh, grappling performances over Paulo Tiago and Sierra Bahadur Zada. Um, Dong Young Kim's really long and like loves to take the back and get mount um, and just uh, hold that position and uh, stifle you, smother you with his uh, with his very dominant uh, positional grappling um, and pushes a really high pace with his ground and pound as well. Um, really dominant grappler, but then against Eric Silva and John Hathaway just seemed to be reborn as a striker, a very wild striker. Um, and against both those guys, you know, you see he's not technical at all, um, you know, doesn't have the conventional uh, jab cross. Uh, knocked out John Hathaway with a spinning back elbow. Um, but in both of those fights, it is important to note that uh, with that striking style being as wild as he was, he left himself open uh, to be hit as well. Eric Silva uh, wobbled him a few times, and uh, John Hathaway, I don't think he hurt him at any point uh, visibly, but he did uh, He did land a lot of his own shots, um, and I think that would be a pretty terrible strategy uh, for Dong Hyun Kim to employ against Tyron Woodley, a guy who has big power, um, and is a real, uh, you know, cannon in that first round. Uh, comes out uh, extremely ag aggressive, looking for the kill, um, and just uh, uh, throws bombs in that first round. Um, and I think if uh, Dong Gyeon Kim tries to do his, uh, his various spinning attacks on Tyron Woodley, I think uh, there's a good chance Woodley could catch him and put him out. Um, the wrestling uh, battle, uh, I think, will be really interesting. Uh, I don't, I don't know um, who would be more effective there. You know, Woodley, the more traditional American wrestler, but Dong Young Kim, uh, a very dominant uh, grappler as well. Um, uh, also has uh, some judo skills there. Uh, and, and once he gets on top, um, you know. I think if he does get a uh, back mount or uh, you know, full mount, some kind of dominant position on Woodley, uh, I do think that could be trouble for Woodley um, because Kim is just so dominant there. Uh, he even got Eric Silva in that position. Um, and I do definitely give Dong Young Kim the cardio advantage. Um, you know, pushes a real hard pace. And the Bahadur Zada and Tiago fight just dominated both of those guys for the whole fight and uh, didn't seem to fade at all. Um, and Tyron Woodley, of course, the big knock on him uh, has been that, you know, he gasses as the fight goes on. Uh, but I just, I don't like this matchup uh, for Dong Young Kim just because of the striking. Um, I think Woodley really has a chance to catch him there, um, especially in that first round. Um, Woodley's been caught too, you know, by Nate Marquardt of all people, and uh, you know Kim could definitely land something on him too, uh, being as wild as he is. But I'm gonna take Woodley here. Uh, not that confident in it. I'm really rooting for Kim. Um, Want to see him do well. Want to see him get a uh, top contender next. Um, but I am taking Woodley. Uh, I think he wins a decision, possibly. Uh, finishing Kim. In the main event, um, Michael Bisming taking on Kung Lee, middleweight fight. Middleweight fight. Um, I have to say, I think this is a bad matchup for Bisming. Uh, Kung Lee being having an unorthodox striking style and having knockout power. Um, you know that's been uh, Bisming's Achilles heel throughout his uh, career. Just guys who have uh, any kind of knockout power, big power punches. Dan Henderson, uh, Vitor Belfort, even in the Jorge Rivera fight, uh, Bisming got dropped there, I believe. 
Um, you know, Bisbing does not uh, fare well with guys who have big power. Um, he did win the Brian Stan fight, uh, but still, uh, Kung Lee with his sneaky, uh, unorthodox uh, striking style with the kicks uh, and the strikes. Um, you know, he throws uh, stuff that you don't see coming, um, like that uh, punch that uh, he he knocked out Rich Franklin with in his last fight. Um, stuff like that. And Michael Bisbing, uh, you know, just has a very kind of straightforward kickboxing style, always in range, always standing right in front of his uh, opponent. Um, I think that could be a perfect chance for Kung Lee to... to sneak something in, a kick or a punch, and uh, put him out. Especially considering Bisbing um, is coming off of a very uh, disappointing performance against Tim Kennedy. You know, it could have been the layoff, the injuries he's dealt with. Um, but uh, Michael Bisbing um, was always praised as a, a guy who was really hard to take down. Uh, and uh, if you did get him down, you couldn't keep him there. Chael Sonnen, uh, you know, his wrestling was not as effective against Bisming as it was against everyone else. Um, but his last fight against Tim Kennedy just uh, totally outworked and, uh, you know, outgrappled badly on the ground. Uh, that could be a sign of uh, his athletic abilities leaving him. Um, just getting to the end of the road, or it could have just been the layoff. Uh, I don't know. Um, even in the fight against Alan Belcher, I thought uh, Bisbing looked a little uh, like he had lost a step. Um, but I cannot, on the on the other side of that, I can't ignore the nearly two-year layoff that Kung Lee um, is on. Um, you know, I'm mean, going to compare uh, this to BJ Penn. Uh, his recent comeback, um, one of the greatest uh, fighters ever, um, who hadn't had a fight in nearly two years when he took on Frankie Edgar, and uh, you know, nearly the same uh, layoff here for Kung Lee, um, and a guy who's much older. He's 42. Uh, you know, I think that's something to seriously consider here. Um, you know, how's that going to affect him? Also, that fight against Vanderlei started off uh, really well. Looked like he was going to put out Vanderlei, and Vanderlei just ended up overwhelming him. I think Bisbing, he lands uh, you know, a couple of his strikes, and it could be a classic Bisbing fight where he just uh, out-hustles the guy and uh, boxes him up for, th for three rounds, although this is a five-round fight. Um, but, you know, a lot of uh, variables here, and I'm not quite sure who to take. Um, you know, I want to go uh, with Michael Bisbing um, just because, uh, you know, that layoff uh, that Kung Lee has had. You know, Kung Lee also hasn't looked great in all of his UFC fights. That fight against uh, Patrick Cote was very uneventful. Um, gosh, but I think both these guys are reaching the end of the road, and uh, I want to go with uh, Kung Lee here. Um, you know, you saw Tim Kennedy was able to land some uh, overhands on Bisbing, and Kung Lee is just a uh, completely different level. Um, just not, can't even uh, compare his uh, technique and his, uh, his deadly striking ability to Tim Kennedy. So I think Kung Lee, um, I'm going to go with him here. <clears throat> but um, really, I could see this uh, going either way. Um, but I'm going to go with Kung Lee. I think he catches Bisming at some point and puts him out. Um, yeah. All right, guys. Well, those are my predictions for UFC Fight Night 48, Bisming versus Lee. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, I appreciate it. Check out my picks for Fight Night 49, Henderson versus Dos Anjos. Check out my recap for Bader versus St. Pru. And I'll be back next week with my picks for 177, Dillashaw versus Barrow 2. Thanks, guys. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye.